Now, home chemistry is great fun, but what do you do if you have to weigh out something as small as a gram of chemical? Your kitchen scales won't go as far as that usually, and anyway, it's not a good idea to ladle chemicals onto the kitchen scales. It'd be nice if you had some of these, they're proper chemical balances, but they cost the earth, so the best thing is perhaps to make your own. It's a bit crude, but it does work. Start with a block of wood that is nice and square and stable and flat, because that's the base of the whole thing. Then you'll need a hacksaw blade, doesn't matter if it's used, but it should be unbroken because you need its full length and you'll certainly need the holes, at least one of them. Hold it about three centimetres into the block of wood and through that hole put a drawing pin and push it really hard so that it clamps the thing hard onto the block of wood. Now that is both the pointer and the spring of your spring balance. Up at this end you'll need a pan for the chemical and a small plastic cap does a good job or if you like, if you're desperate, you can make a little paper box. Don't have to be desperate, that works quite well. But I'm going to use a small plastic cap because it is nice and light and washable. And you glue it on just before the hole in the hacksaw blade. That glue will take a while to dry, but I'll press on anyway. Right, now that's the balance, but you, you can't use a balance unless you can read it off. So make a scale here, a block of wood's fine. I've stuck some paper on there and graph paper is the best because it's even got uh, gradations on it. Right, now that's a scale with nothing. And as we start to calibrate it, we really must get a mark of what it shows with no weights in it. For that, I like to use a, an ink pad. You can use a pen or a, just ordinary ink or even a pencil. But the ink pad's good because the ink doesn't dry very fast. Just rub that on the end of the pointer, like that, and stop the pointer from jiggling by touching it with a finger. And when it's still, bring it up to the paper, and that will give you the point at which the scale has nothing in it. There we are, yeah, a little mark there. Okay, now we calibrate it with weights, and the easiest thing, I think, are when sent pieces, because each of those is roughly two and a half grams. Put one in the pan, the scale goes down, when it stops jiggling, we put it up to the graph paper and make another mark. That's the two and a half mark. There we are, very faint, but it's just there. Another one, that's five. The scale will do, I think, up to about 10. Make another mark, very faint, but it's there. Another one, that'll be seven and a half grams. And I might stop there, because you get the idea. Stop it jiggling. When it's still, measure it off and print it. Now those are very faint marks, so let's just ink them in with a pencil. Here we go. There's naught, two and a half, five, seven and a half. And if I was measuring out one gram, it would be around about there. I'll make a big line so we can all see it. Back on the table, out with the coins, and let's just check. Yes, it still reads naught with nothing in the scale. Now let's put it to the test with some chemical. I'm going to test it with the smallest quantity of all, one gram of sugar. Add it to the pan very carefully. Here goes. And that looks to me about a gram. But we won't take my word for it. We'll give it the test on the really good scales. Move the whole thing over. And I've got some paper on each pan, this side to protect the pan from the chemical, which I'll tip in there, the other side to balance this side. And into that I'll put a one gram weight. Here it goes. And if I lift the scales up, we'll see how accurate our own little spring balance was. Well, not too bad. They're still hovering. This sugar is a little bit too heavy, but you can see by the seesawing, it's really not too badly off at all. So there you are. Happy experimenting.